Hello and welcome back to Sharks Happen. Today we are going to go over recent attacks. We're going to go over attacks that have happened this year. Uh, we're going to go over four or five that are non-fatal and I'm going to talk about a couple of fatalities that have happened uh, with less detail. We're not going to get into it as deep because i got to wait until I get enough information to at least tell you what happened. But on these other ones I have enough information that we can go ahead and go through them and when anything comes out later I can go through and update the files that way. So stick with us, we got a great show. Okay, to start out our show, we are going to head over to Lucy's Beach, and that is over in Western Australia, and the date on this is April 23rd of 2023. Max Marsden, he is 30 years old, and he is out doing some surfing with a friend. Uh, he is out in the water alone at the time, at least his friend is not in the water, his friend is on the beach, he's out in the water. Doesn't say how far from shore, the depth, but it's about 735, 737 or so. When he's attacked, he shark comes up and it turns out to be a bronze whaler, grabs him by the arm. I, I haven't even been able to determine, I have only found two articles on this, I think right now. And I can't determine which arm it got, but it got him in the arm and his buddy's on the beach watching this, watching the shark grab him. He says the shark grabbed him by the arm and suddenly you could see his buddy. He could see that Max was beating on the shark. His friend's name is Danny. So Danny said he saw the sh him strike the shark at least a few times and the shark must have released him and went on its way and Max made his way in but Danny went out and helped him in and also helped him out with the first aid. Uh, the bite sounded like it was pretty serious to the arm even for a five foot shark. Down to the bone. Max had said there was tooth bits in his arm uh, still when he was going in for surgery so uh, or maybe even during surgery it could have been more than one surgery but he had surgery uh, it was on the 23rd I think the 23rd late on the 23rd or early on the 24th he was released to go home and recover um, they said that it kind of, kind of went through the muscle and all the way to the bone so he might have some decent amount of rehabilitation coming up so he ends up surviving five foot Bronze Whaler Shark, we don't get a lot of those, so I like to cover them when I do. This won't go in our stats, but if it did, it would go down as an attack, not an attempt to predate by a five foot Bronze Whaler. Okay, now we're gonna head over to the Keys, to Florida Keys, to Summerlin Key, and the date on this attack is June 29th of 2022. Lindsay Brun, she is out with her husband, and they're on their boat. It doesn't say how far from shore it is, and it's about a 15 to, I believe he said a 20 minute ride to get her in after this attack. So they're quite a ways out. Uh, if you got one motor, you usually have two motors on a boat. So for a 20 minute drive in, you're, you're probably out five miles or so, but you might be at a sandbar. So depth and all that, it's hard to tell. And I'm looking forward to getting that information later on for my stats and to see uh, the situation for this because with these uh, attacks. I like to see if there's something different near shore than offshore and I think there is with bull sharks but anyway we're gonna get into this with Lindsay uh, her and her husband were out she jumps into the water and it's sometime around I believe it is three o'clock Lindsay went ahead and jumped off of the boat her and her husband were on their boat she jumps into the water and her husband said to himself you know it was a massive splash that happened you know right after she jumped off the boat and he even said afterwards, he says, you know, this doesn't make sense to me. My wife, my wife isn't heavy enough. 120 pound woman isn't going to make that much splashing. She might have jumped right on top of that shark. We've had this before. We jump in the water and there's just splashing. And we've also had where they jump in the water, uh, Kabinsky and uh, David Weir, where they jump in the water and you, you're hit just seconds later where the shark comes and gets you, where you didn't necessarily land on it. But this sounds like one of those cases where she might have landed right on the shark and it might have did a big splash and then bit down on her and it bit down on her twice. Now, her husband said that he saw her surface and she yelled help me and he said as soon as she said that the water turned red so the blood hit the water and he could see that she was attacked he gets her up on the boat like I said it was a, about a 20 minute ride in to get her in she gets in and she has a, a gash on her leg that goes like just above the knee it looks like all the way up to her hip 
So it's a decent sized bite. By, by that bite size, if it's like a tiger or a bull, I'd say it's a six to eight foot shark that got a hold of her. Um, you know, depending on what kind of shark, it could be, you know, if it was like a reef shark or something, it'd be huge. Uh, I don't think they come much bigger than that. So uh, I would say a tiger or a bull got a hold of her leg and bit down on it. I'll put a picture of it in this. Uh, they have it stitched up, so I'll put the picture in the video. But uh, that's her leg. That's what this bite, and it was a two bite situation. So it bit down, it probably regressed. So went ahead and repurchased after that and bit down again. She ends up surviving the attack, but no, no mention of any arteries, uh, any nerve damage in the process. So that's our attack on Lindsey Brunn and that happened down in the Keys and when I get information on all these, I usually don't cover these because I know they're not going to have all the information there that I want, but when I get distance, as far as depth, as far as from shore, all that will go into the spreadsheet so these aren't going to be updated in the spreadsheet until they're updated more and I have most of the information I need but we're going to go over them anyway then and that's our story on Lindsey Brunn this goes down as an attack not an attempt to predate I'm going to say a 68 foot probably bull or tiger shark but that's up in the air Okay, now we're going to head over to Marathon, which is down in the Florida Keys. It's just south of where I usually hang out in Isla Mirada, probably about 15, 20 miles south of Isla Mirada. And the date on this one is May 17th of 2023. Uh, Kevin Blanco, he is 18 years old. He is out doing some spearfishing with, I believe it's his uh, it's a friend of his, two of them are in the water, and he is 70 feet deep at the time. I don't have the exact time on this one, but he's 70 feet down in the water when a bull shark comes up, and it sounds like he didn't even see it until after he was bitten, like probably most shark attacks. But when you're in the water, where you're submerged in the water, I think you have a lot better chance of seeing the shark before it gets to you. But this one could have came up you know, sounds like it came up from underneath him because it bit him in the thigh, clamping down hard, biting twice. And he says that this thing, he says he didn't feel pain like from cuts from the teeth. So like knife cuts or anything. He didn't feel that. He felt pressure. Most of these that we go over, and usually you don't hear that a lot with the bull shark, which this turns out to be. But usually you hear that with the, with the great white, that you don't feel pressure or you just feel pressure and you don't feel the teeth. Well, this happened here with the, with the bull shark, which is interesting because like I said, not a lot of people mention that they don't feel the pain, they feel the pressure pressure. And here Kevin Blanco says, I felt the pressure on my leg. He says, then I could see the gray shape of the shark. So it came up from his leg and was right in front of him. And he doesn't mention that he hit it. Uh, if he had hit it, I think he would have said it. So the shark bit him in the leg. Sounds like it bit down twice on him, but he doesn't have any defensive wounds to any of his hands. So I think it just bit him twice, came up and he got a look at it and it swam off. Um, like I said, they're in 70 foot deep water and they're out there off a marathon. So I would think that they'd have to be at least, you know, three to four miles offshore to be able to be in that depth. Now, once I get that, I'll be able to uh, put this with everything else. But the thing with the, these bull sharks is because we know, all know how they say how much testosterone they have and how dangerous they are, how many of them end up fatalities when you're bitten. The thing I'm noticing, and I can't wait to get back into my stats, is that when you're offshore, when you're out in the middle of the water, these spear fishermen especially, you're a lot more likely to get a territorial bite just like this, just like the last story we had, from a bull shark than you are if you're on shore. If you're in the, uh, on shore and a bull shark grabs you, you're in a lot worse trouble, I think, than if you run into one out there in the depths. Because we go over, I don't know how many of these bull shark attacks we've gone over on spear fishermen. Guys bitten in the arm, it swims off. Guys bitten in the leg, it swims off. They don't even hit these things. And then you have the video that I saw Christian when he was going through and he was reacting to shark attack videos. They have that little bull shark. It looks like a little five footer down at the bottom of the water. And it spots the guy filming it from up. And he's a spear fisherman and he's obviously filming GoPro probably on his head. And you can see the shark as soon as it notices him. It comes like a bat out of hell and tries to bite him, he shoots it in the mouth and ends up, you know, I'm sure killing the shark. Uh, rightly so, the thing was going to come and bite him. That's our attack on uh, these 18 years old. Kevin Blanco, 18 years old, an attack 
Uh, not an attempt to predate a bull shark nine to ten feet long. So he got a he got bit by the thing in the in the thigh twice, and then it comes up and he can see it in his face. We're gonna put a uh, I'm gonna put a link so you can click on the link in the description and you can see the picture of his leg. They have some of it blurred out because it's bigger, deeper cuts, and I'm sure you can see inside of the leg pretty good. You can see some of the teeth marks, but they're not gonna show you because it looks like a four inch by two inch cut that's on both sides of his thigh, both sides of his leg. Uh, pretty gnarly looking cuts. And uh, like I said, he didn't feel the pain until afterwards other than the pressure on the attack. So a couple interesting things to go over there with this attack on Kevin Blanco and we will move on. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Turks and Caicos and that is over in the water and on this one, we do not have a date yet. Uh, I didn't find a date on this when I went through it, so I don't like to put a date unless I narrow that thing down. So we don't know the date. I'll put that in later on. Turks and Caicos, a Connecticut woman. We don't know that. I don't think they gave me her. Oh, 22. No name, but they gave the age. So this Connecticut woman, 22 years old, she's in Turks and Caicos. It's in the afternoon. She's out snorkeling. And it doesn't say the depth of water and distance to shore. We will definitely get that. But she is attacked by a shark and it comes up and it clamps on her leg. And the shark ends up removing part of her part of her leg, it is reported. Now it was three o'clock in the afternoon when she was attacked, probably around there, because 307 was when the uh, report was in that she was bitten and the people brought her in. She was sounds like she was brought in to shore and a worker at a resort there. I don't know if she was at that resort or not, but a worker at a resort called the 911 call at 307, so that's why they know it's 307 or just before that the attack happened. And he told them that she was attacked and she lost uh, her leg. She took her entire leg. And I know that I had heard that she had lost her whole leg and it. They turn out that they say this is, uh, they believe a reef shark. And that would make me believe that she lost part of her leg. Um, I don't think a reef shark's gonna take and cut through any, you know, bone. Um, you know, maybe, I don't know how big a wrist bone is, but maybe take your hand off or something. I don't think it can go through a leg bone, uh, a reef shark. So I'm not sure, but I don't think so. So losing part of a leg makes sense. It reminds me of uh, one we're going to go over real soon. Um, got another cluster I'm going to go over. And uh, Lloyd Miller, uh, her leg, <laughs> when I looked at that picture, I don't mean to laugh, but I'm just still stunned by the look of the leg and that the leg is still there. Because I had told people when I looked at it, the leg is already gone, that they told her that she lost a foot and she had lost a whole leg. Well, it looks like she lost the leg, but you gotta look at the picture clearly and you can see that she lost a lot of that leg, uh, most of the mass from the one side of the leg, but the leg was still intact. So, she ends up losing part of her leg. They get her in and she gets, you know, the help she needs. She's going through surgeries and she will survive. Uh, at first they didn't know if they'd be able to save the leg, but it sounds like they're gonna be able to save the leg. And uh, she'll get out of this with just having, you know, medical bills and having a long rehabil rehabilitation road. Uh, I don't know that it took out any kind of nerves or, or muscles or anything like that, but usually if they're taking a bite and removing flesh, then you know they're gonna have to do skin grafts and things and I would think that just the scar tissueing and all that stuff alone is gonna be a problem when you're trying to get back to 100% so that's our attack on the Connecticut woman 22 years old over in Turks and Caicos uh, I don't yeah they, they suspect a Caribbean reef shark and I have no reason you know not to think that if it's if it's part of the leg if she had lost a whole leg I'd say that's tiger sharks <laughs> so that's where we are on that one and we will move on okay before we get to the end of the show I wanted to discuss uh, first Simon Bacanello Simon Bacanello he was the fatality that we just recently had maybe a month ago uh, over in Australia and this one caught my attention because it is very unusual um, when I went through the stats the last time, and I talked about surfers, you know, just all sharks and surfers, there was like 12 of them, 12 fatalities on surfers. And only two of them, I think, were uh, confirmed to be a great white involved. So they don't do it a lot. Javon Wright sticks out in my mind. It's just a terrible one where he got a wave in and his buddies were waiting on a wave. And 
they watched him going in, they watched him going in towards the spot where they exit the water and then he just disappeared like he fell off his board. And then when the wave lifted them up, they were able to see a sh the tail of a huge great white just thrashing around. And then the next time they were lifted up, they saw their buddy in the shark's mouth. So each time they were lifted up, they were able to see this prolonged attack going on on Chabon Wright. Uh, that one sticks in my head because this doesn't happen very often. I've only, like I said, Chabon Wright's the only name that sticks in my head of being eaten by a great white shark like that. So this Simon Bacanello is the next one because uh, you know he was attacked and I'm pretty sure this is a great white. Uh, came up to him and the people said that they saw the thrashing in the water of the shark first and then the tombstoning of his board so the board sticks straight up because the leash is being held under the water so you know the leash isn't very very uh, long but yeah probably in a good I would think seven to ten feet of water minimum to be able to tombstone the board like that um, if it's shallower like you're in four or five feet I don't think it would tombstone the board so he must have been in a decent depth of water and probably a, quite a ways offshore because he was the furthest back so he's the, he's on the back line and that means that he's the furthest out to sea which means this isn't the sh case of a shark going in passing others up and picking somebody this is the case I think of a desperate shark running into the first person he's going to run into and he's going to take care of what he needs to take care of and he goes ahead and does it so people that have witnessed it saw that shark attacked him dragged him under couldn't see him you could see some I think a little bit of the shark and splashing of the water and the tombstoning of the board then he was attacked twice and then a third time they said they saw the shark come back at him a third time and then it must have taken him away that third time and all they've been able to find, uh, they've already called off the search, but all that they found that I had heard was little pieces of his suit, little pieces of his wetsuit. And that's all they could find. So this shark, uh, just like they do when they're in a feeding event, it's completely different, especially when you're on a board. So Simon Bacanello ends up being, you know, a name I probably, uh, I'm not going to forget. I probably like Simon Nellis because I ended up seeing that one. But uh, this one is, you know, stands out to me because it's a fatality and it's a consuming of a surfer and it sounds like by a great white and that is just rare as could be I don't like using the word rare but being eaten by a great white while you're surfing that is rare so um, I wanted to bring that one up now we're gonna get into the other one Cab Cameron the 18 year old Cameron Robbins oh man um, everybody has been posting about this one in the comments and I don't blame you and that is might be the creepiest attack video I have ever seen and this is why I'm going I'm going little fishing in Georgia and I'm leaving either tonight or tomorrow and I'm going for a couple weeks my dad moved from the Keys to Georgia where I was planning on buying a house but the fact that you don't have an income you can't buy no house so uh, I'll have to wait to buy my house to go hang out with my dad but I'm going down to see him today to do so for a couple weeks. I'm going to film a, an episode or two so you get a, at least one episode a week for the next couple weeks. And uh, But I'm going to go down there and do some small lake fishing and some river fishing and most of it's going to be probably for crappie. But sometimes you do some fishing for bluegill and you'll use bobbers and that is what this reminded me of watching a bobber if you're fishing close to your boat and you see that bobber disappear you can kind of see the thing is it streaks down that's exactly what this looked like I mean oh my goodness now at first when I first watched the video this is such a strange video because you know they're they're goading him to jump off and he jumps off now they're all looking and the bye bye comment that that made me think this can't be real why is this guy saying bye bye if there's a shark in the water that's the rudest damn thing I've ever heard I don't know that he saw the shark, but that, that just stuck out to me as being odd. The guy that says bye-bye to him. Because when I look down in the water when he sees that, seconds after, maybe two seconds after that guy says bye-bye, that guy's dragged off down and to the right. And I mean, that looks 100% like a bobber. There's, I don't know that you could fake that. I mean, you could, but I don't know how you could. I mean, he just got taken by a shark. And that is creepy. <laughs> creepiest damn thing I've seen and like I said because I liken it to fishing when I watch a bobber go under but it's a person I'm like oh so 
This is the thing that everybody on Indianapolis and any of these shipwrecks, the Bir Birkenhead, all of them, this is the thing that, they, that happens. I mean, it's bad enough when you see sharks attacking you on a beach, but it's another thing altogether to see them just disappear. You're just gone. And it's just like a couple of these where, you know, the kid was on the beach and he was there and all of a sudden somebody saw him disappear like under the water. <laughs> That ain't drowning. You drown, you're going to try to fight it. You don't just drown without anything happening, sucked right into the water. And uh, so that's the story on that. And we will move on and get the show done. Okay, we're going to finish off our show over off of Queensland, Australia, off of, what's the name of the island? Darnley Island. Darnley or Darnley? Darnley Island. And I guess it was Erub Island in the past. This is September of 1954. Uh, Kapua, what's your last name? Kapua? Kapua Gretchen. He is 35 years old. He was out doing some spearfishing off of the island, Dan Darnley Island. He's out spearfishing with a friend. He's attacked by a nine foot shark reportedly. They don't explain where he was bitten, but he was bitten pretty bad. His friend gets him out of the water, puts on a tourniquet, and now there's a Tura boat. But the Tura pulled into port and they heard about this attack. They knew a victim was out there on this island, Darnley Island, so the Tura it's a large ship, it ends, it's 65 people, I think. It's How many people are on that thing? 85 foot boat, so there's a lot of people on the boat. And they head out to go pick up this victim. They obviously make it to pick up the victim, get him on board, and it sounds like they sutured up his wounds. And they're making their way back and they get 65 miles from this Thursday island and they run into a storm and a storm pushes them into a reef where they get pummeled and all of a sudden everybody on the boat has to go and be shipped by little dinghy, by little boats, onto this part of Long Island. So they're off of Long Island, and uh, they're being shipped onto Long Island at the time. And it's 1954, so this is just swampland, it sounds like. So now they have to do some kind of a emergency. Um, by the way, Kapua had passed away from his wounds. His wounds reopened in this time that they were stuck on this part of Long Island and couldn't get help and his his wounds reopened obviously no equipment and he ended up passing away now they have to wait days for somebody to even get them water where they're at you know and there's seawater there and you're on long island i don't know that there's any kind of fresh water you could drink anywhere so now there's a, a rescue effort for these people trying to just get them water first of all to be able to help them out so they end up going out to help out a victim of a shark attack collect the victim, probably his friend too, and they start making their way back, run into a storm, pushed in, foundered on rocks, and all of a sudden they're, uh, they're all over on swampy Long Island at the time, it sounds like, so uh, then they have to wait to be, be helped out, but it doesn't sound like there were any other fatalities, just of Kapua, so that, you know, that would go down as an attack, an attempt to predate, uh, not an attempt to predate, and I wouldn't even put this down as a fatality because he survived it. He was stitched up. He was being shipped back. And if it, I think if it wasn't for the storm, he wouldn't uh, went ahead and passed away. So this will go in our books as an attack, not an attempt to predate. And I'm not. I'm going to put fatality, but I am going to put an asterisk next to that because I think he would have survived if the other issues had not happened. So that's our story of Kapua. That's the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's going to be about seven days before you get another video and it's going to be seven days in between those because I am heading out of town, uh, finally getting back to see my father. Uh, this is probably the longest stretch to where I haven't seen him and you know, it's due to what I, you know, what are you going to do if you can't get down there and get back and that's why I would, that's why I doubled up on my shows because I knew that my dad, I was going to talk my dad into, if he didn't even do it, I was going to buy a place in Georgia. It was going to be my house in Georgia where I'd spend one day more than half my time so I could vote in Georgia instead of Michigan so that I could move my headquarters to Georgia instead of Michigan so I could pretty much just be a visitor to Michigan and, uh, and my wife and her house here. And all that's on hold right now. So uh, I don't even know how that's going to happen now because, you know, normally you have income that you can go by to be able to get a loan. <laughs> but when YouTube takes all your impressions and gives them to whoever, uh, kind of hard to do that. So one of those things that I'm going to have to wait and see. Maybe, you know, they'll slam them with some more punitives for that. But uh, it'll all come out eventually. But that's the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll be back in about a week for another show. I'm uh, 
actually going to have a couple videos. Um, I think I'm going to have a, a, nor a cluster attack in about a week. And I'll also have, I'm going over Robert Pamperin's uh, attack again because there's some issues, of course, with the GSAF story. But I think that uh, from the sources, they got the story from and We'll go over that and we'll go over the issues and how that, that story is going to change in our stats and also be removed from the swallow hole list. So that's our story for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you'll be back in the next seven days. But until then, if you go into that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.